Okay, hello and welcome to today's video everyone. So I was recently asked this question, find the domain of y equals sine inverse of x squared. Now this isn't something that you should like automatically know straight away, but it's not too difficult to work out. So how do we, how do we work this out? Well, what, what do we know about sine inverse? Well we know that the domain, so domain of sine inverse of x it's going to be minus 1 it's less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1 okay so if we're trying to work out sine inverse of x squared the way that we do that is by substituting this x for x squared so we can have minus 1 is less than or equal to x squared is less than or equal to 1 Okay, and so you can see that in general the formula is for the domain of something such as sine inverse of any function of x, what we're going to do is we're going to solve minus 1 less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to 1. Okay, so for this particular example our f of x is x squared, but this here is the general the uh, general formula for solving these types of questions. Okay, so we want to solve this inequality for x. Okay, so sometimes when you need to solve an inequality that's bounded above and below, it's best to consider the two inequalities separately. So just break them apart like this. So here we've just got this part of the inequality, and here we just have this part of the inequality. Okay, now, when we solve this inequality, what's that going to be? Well, x squared is always greater than negative 1 for all real values of x. So here, the solution to this, so the solution set is all real x. Okay, because x squared is always greater than 0. So if it's greater than 0, it's definitely greater than minus 1. Now here, how do we solve x squared greater than or equal to 1? Now, some of you might know this, but if you haven't, or if you forgot how to solve something like this, this is how I like to solve it. I like to get everything onto one side. And so we have this here as a parabola. So let's draw the parabola. We have this parabola here, and okay, it's going to cross at minus 1. Okay, so this is our y-axis and our x-axis, and that's our parabola, and this point is minus 1. Now the x-intercepts are going to be minus 1 and 1. Okay, so we see that by factorizing like this. Okay, so those are our x-intercepts. Okay, now, what does this say? Well, where is this, this function, less than or equal to 0? And the places where it's less than or equal to 0 are here. So all here, it's less than 0, it's equal to 0 at 1 and minus 1, and above, it's going to be positive. Okay, so the curve here is positive, and then it's negative, and then it's positive again. So here it's asking, where is it less than 0? And so the points where it's less than or equal to 0, because there's this uh, equality as well, where is it less than or equal to 0? Well, in between these two points and including them. So minus 1 in between, x in between minus 1 and 1. Okay, so now we have our two, two sets, and we have to take the intersection of these two sets. So where do they overlap? Well, here it's quite obvious. This is all real x, and this all real x includes this. So therefore, the domain of sine inverse of x squared is minus 1 is less than x, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1. Okay, and that's how you find the domain of this function here, sine inverse of x squared. Thanks for watching.